Good morning, rock stars, and welcome to Free Motion Quilting Bandcamp. My name is Holly Ann Knight of Strigan Story, and it is my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Y'all, thank you so much for getting up and at them early on a Saturday morning right before Christmas. Uh, if y'all's the last couple of weeks have been anything like mine, we've been going a million miles an hour and I am really hoping that over the next hour, we can kind of take a breath together. We can enjoy talking quilting. Um, and hopefully, you'll leave here inspired to take some next steps on your free motion quilting journey. Now, I know that it is early, and we are starting right here at the top of the hour. So I'm going to take a breath and have a sip of coffee. Uh, if you have not already, do say hi in the chat. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I see Christy from Nebraska. I see Tanya from Michigan. Marty from California. Beth, hello. How are you, Rockstar? Shanna, Joe, Karen, Mrs. Tear, also tuning in from here in the ATL. And Janet, good morning, y'all. It is absolutely wonderful to have y'all here. Um, I just flew in last night from Orlando, Florida, if y'all have been following along on Instagram. Um, something that we have not talked as much about at String and Story because it's still relatively new. Uh, but we have been kind of tapped by Burnett to be doing some work with some amazing cosplay creators. And I got to go meet them in person this week. So I am fresh off a trip. Like I said, got my coffee. Um, and I'm ready to shift gears back into talking, of course, about free motion quilting. All right. Shall we do it? If you are just joining, do say hi in the chat, but I am not going to waste any time diving straight in this morning. So this, of course, is Quilting Rockstar Bandcamp Free Motion Quilting Edition. This is the place to start. If one of the things on your list for 2024 is I want to learn how to free motion quilt, I want to be able to finish my own quilts, right? Um, it's also the place for you if that was on your 2023 list. And you're like, oh shoot, like it's the December 23rd and I never did that this year. We are here today to set you up for success in 2024, to get those quilt tops quilted and to get to have the joy of doing it yourself because you are a whole quilting rock star. All right. As I said, this week, I have the pleasure of helping you kick off your free motion quilting journey. It's my mission to help more quilters finish their own quilts skillfully and joyfully. Listen, we talk a lot around here about it being all about the joy units, right? Quilting is something that we do for fun. And if it is not bringing me joy, then I'm not here for it when it comes to my quilting, right? I want my quilting to be a place uh, where I can come and relax and have a great time being creative. And I want that for you too. I think quilts desired have been dirty words for far too long, and I think it's time to get you excited and ready to quilt those quilts yourself. Now, finishing your own quilts is a creative and rewarding practice, uh, and when it feels hard, I just want you to remember that you and I and other quilting rock stars have your back. You are going to quilt amazing things. And also remember that something always feels hardest when it's unfamiliar, when we're new to it. So if you're here and you're both excited and a little nervous, just know that that's totally normal, all right? Now, if you're not familiar, my name is Holly Ann Knight. As I mentioned, I've been teaching free motion quilting since 2017, and I have watched thousands of quilters just like y'all uh, grow in their confidence to free motion quilt through my blog, workshops like this one, and digital courses like FMQA, which we'll talk about at the end of our time together. I am married to the hubster, John, and we have two not-so-little boys, Jim and Ian. Uh, they are, well, Jim will turn nine on Monday. He's a Christmas baby and Ian is almost eight. And then of course we have our dog Havana who is sound asleep on the couch in the hallway and our two cats and our big old fish tank. If I'm not here, I'm probably hanging out somewhere on the town green or I'm at home riding my Peloton or I'm out for a run. These are all really good guesses. Now going back one slide, if you also are unfamiliar, I do just want to let you know uh, we, in addition to having all of our digital education, which is what we're really focused on here today, we have a brick and mortar shop here in downtown Duluth. So I'm sitting in our classroom slash retreat space right now, right at the end of this building, right on Main Street, um, is String and Story on Main. And we have uh, Paintbrush Studio solids, we have Moda fabrics, we have Burnett sewing machines, we have Orifil thread, and lots, lots more. And we do also have an online store, and we ship worldwide. It's big fun. All right. So a bit of housekeeping, please settle in and get comfy. I hope that you are drinking coffee or tea or some other comforting beverage. I hope you are in your soft pants, maybe cuddled under a quilt, right? It is right here just after solstice. Thank goodness the days are getting longer, but it is still very much cozy time. So get cozy and enjoy this time 
connecting with your fellow quilting rock stars and learning about free motion quilting. Please also ask all of the questions. Uh, one of the things that I remember most about my journey as a brand new quilter uh, was feeling a little nervous to ask questions, right? Because I didn't necessarily want to betray how little I felt like I knew. Um, and I was really self-conscious about it. So I really want to encourage y'all, please don't be self-conscious about asking questions. This is designed for free motion quilters of all levels to be asking questions. And there is no question too introductory. All right. I have come to this with the assumption of you might have never even touched a free motion quilting foot before and may not be sure how this works. And I want you to leave here feeling confident, not only about what free motion quilting is and how fun it can be, but that you can do it. All right. So you are in the right place, my dear rock star. And as I'm reading these out loud, please drop in the chat which one might resonate with you um, of what brought you here today, especially on Christmas, Adam, right? For most of us, this is a really, really busy time of year and Christmas is a holiday that we celebrate. Uh, so what made today worth carving out this time, right? You are in the right place if you desperately want to finish your own quilts, but you feel stuck on how to begin right? Maybe you've seen beautiful pictures and videos um, online in books. And you're like, I want to be able to do that, but you really don't know where to start. This is exactly the right place. You've tried free motion quilting in the past and it just didn't work out the way you wanted to, right? I can't tell you how many conversations I've had in the shop at QuiltCon when I'm out speaking to guilds um, and I will uh, speak to a quilter and say, you know, you could do this. And they go, no, 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 I tried, and oh, it was so bad, right? Please don't be discouraged by a less than ideal first attempt, all right? The first time you tried to walk, do you know what happened? You fell on your butt, all right? So I want to encourage you, even if this is something you've tried before, if there's any part of you that is still curious about this, let's get up and try again, all right? Maybe you're curious about Free Motion Quilting Academy, right? Maybe you're that step ahead and you know that we've got a wonderful online course and you're like, I have questions. I know that FMQA is open and I really, I have questions that I want to ask and that's why I'm here. Y'all are all in the right place. All right. So drop in the chat. Let me know what brought you to us today. Um, Beth says, I've set aside 2024 as the year to learn Free Motion Quilting and Ruler Work. Yes, Beth. Beth, you know, I've been waiting for this moment for years. I am so excited for you, Rockstar. Uh, Cindy says, hello, hello, Cindy. Pat said, I've tried before and I need some tips, tips and tricks. This is an awesome masterclass for you, Pat. You're gonna, you're gonna have some good takeaways at the end of our time together. I love that. My coffee's still very hot, so I have to sip slowly or we're gonna end up with a scorched mouth. All right, the other thing I wanna know from y'all before we get started. What is your dream? What's the dream quilt? Oh, Mrs. Sarah says, I'm bored with knotting my quilts. Yes, let's take it up a notch. I love that. Uh, maybe there's a specific quilt that you want to finish, right? This can tie really well into this question that some of y'all are still answering. Maybe there's a specific quilting plan. Maybe there's a specific quilting motif. Maybe there's a specific quilt. I want to know what the dream is, right? Because when that dream is just living in your head, Honestly, it's just a wish, right? And statistics show that something like, it's like something insane, like 30, 40, 50%, that if you write a dream, an idea, a desire down, it becomes 30, 40, 50% more likely to happen, right? Because you've articulated, you've spoken out into the universe, right? Words are powerful. Our words can create a reality, right? So name that dream for me um, of what do you, what do you want to quilt, right? Uh, Marty says, I do uh, block of the month with Sue Sparger will applique and I want to finish with free motion quilting. Yes. Yes. Free motion quilting and applique. Mm, so good. Love it. Virginia wants to do feathers. Yes, please. Yes, please. I always tell the story during this section of uh, the Tula Pink um, quilt that I've been working on for forever. It's 100 Days, 100 Blocks by Gnome Angel. And I'm doing tulip pink fabric. Now that is absolutely still a dream for me, right? That hasn't changed. Um, the other dream though, is I just am so excited to spend 2024 with y'all. I know that sounds cheesy, right? But I mentioned, you know, the very beginning of our time together, how busy the last few weeks have been. And I love the busyness of it, right? It's been busy with quilting. It's been busy with uh, Christmas shopping and wrapping presents and getting, go to, getting to go down to Orlando and 
uh, go to an anime con called Holiday Matsuri, which I know nothing about anime. I know very little about cosplay, and I truly was just there to learn and to support support some partners. Um, but all of that hustle and bustle has just reminded me how much I love spending time with y'all, and I love watching y'all's dreams come true. So that's what I'm signing up for in 2024 is to help y'all's quilting dreams come true. Uh, let's see. Pat says, my dream is to learn how to move from one motif to the next. Yes. Joe says, I want to accent the negative space in my quilt. Um, yes. Yeah, so and Joe, you did graduate from RQA. That's awesome. And you're taking this next step. I love it. Uh, Dinger says, I just purchased a cutie frame. I want to upgrade my free motion quilting efforts. Yes. Mrs. Terror says, my dream is to play endlessly with colors and designs and then have a place to donate the quilts to folks in need. Yes to all of the above. Listen, all of these dreams that y'all are saying can come true like in Q1 of 2024, right? These are, you just have to reach out and grab this dream. That's why I want y'all to write it down. I love it. Virginia wants to do feathers. Melissa says, I want to learn how to decide on quilting designs and quilts as desired. I don't even know what that means. Yes, to pick motifs that are going to make your quilt shine. I love that. And Deborah says, I would love to quilt the 30 plus flimsies I have. Let me tell you what, Deborah. I have more than one rock star who has come, I, like I have a lot of rock stars that have come to this masterclass or a similar one that we've done over the years and put that dream. And let me tell you, they've made it happen. They've made it happen. We have several rock stars who have quilted dozens of quilts this year because they graduated from Free Motion Quilting Academy last year and they said 2023 is the year I finished stuff. So Deborah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so here's the biggest takeaway. Hold that dream on one hand and hold this truth. I'm going to dare to call it a truth. And the other, you can and will be a free motion quilting rock star. And that's how this dream is going to come true. So let's now, we're going to go through and we're going to talk about three really important skills to begin building, to set yourself up for success. And then we're going to talk about the next step, which would be to join Free Motion Quilting Academy. All right. Today, we're going to tackle how to quilt pain-free. This is one of the number one objections I hear from rock stars. They've tried to free motion quilt. It makes their shoulders hurt. And then they're like, I don't know if I can do this. I just, I don't know if I can sign up to be in pain. I do not want you to sign up to be in pain. So we're going to talk about how to quilt pain free. All right. We're going to talk about how to have invisible starts and stops, right? This is another thing of like, all right, I got going. And then one of a few things happened. Your thread broke, your bobbin ran out, uh, or you need to transition to another area of the quilt. Um, either because you quilted yourself into a corner, it happens, or you need to change thread color, or you just need to move for some reason, right? Uh, Tanya says, I am seeing a black screen and no sound. Uh-oh, did we lose connection? I am so glad that y'all said that. Let's see. Uh-oh. Are y'all here? Let's see, I have internet. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Can y'all hear me yet? Everything looks fine on my end. I'm gonna click the little button that says having issues and see what, see what happens. Oh no, that's not helpful. Uh, Y'all can hear? Okay. Oh, thank God, Valerie. Okay, so Valerie, you can hear me this whole time. A bunch of people cannot. Oh, dear. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Those who lost connection, try hitting refresh. Okay, we're going to give this just a second to see if we can get everybody back online. Thank God some of y'all can see and hear me because I was like, I everything looks completely fine on my end. I'm like, the internet is here. The mic is working. <laughs> All right. Got it? Did that work? Aha! Yes! Okay. Y'all didn't miss anything. Don't panic. We made no progress. We just paused and waited for you. Okay. 
I don't know what happened. Thank you to those of you who chimed in and said that you lost me. And thank you for those of you who reassured me that it was still streaming. All seems well now. All right. So today we are going to tackle how to quilt pain-free, right? How to have invisible starts and stops so you can move around, change threads, change bobbins, whatever you need to do, right? And, and this is perhaps the most important part because this is our biggest roadblock to learning a new skill. We're going to talk about how to think like a rock star. All right. And as I mentioned at the end, then I'm going to set you up for success by telling you all about Free Motion Quilting Academy and inviting you to start the year off spending quality time with me and your fellow rock stars on that journey. All right. Sound like a plan? Let's do it. Dun da da da. Pain free quilting. Three of my favorite words. All right. Ergonomic posture and a proper quilting setup are absolutely vital to a pain-free quilting experience. Now, I'm gonna scoot y'all back just a little bit so I can tilt my camera because I wanna show y'all how I'm sitting right now, okay? I know it cuts off my head a little bit, right? But I'm sitting in a chair, my feet are flat on the floor. This is my quilting table, right? And it is landing right below my bra line, right? Right at the bottom of my sternum at the moment. This is a typical table height, all right? Um, it is very common for us to be sitting where our feet are going to be more or less flat on the floor and our, our table is fairly high on our bodies, right? Right up at that kind of bottom of sternum height, because that's a comfortable height for things like writing and eating without spilling. Here's the challenge. When I do this, and this is going to be kind of tricky for y'all to see, notice how when I bend my elbow, let me scoot this way so y'all can see. See how I'm having to cock my shoulder up to get my elbow on the table? Because if I just drop my arm to my side, it's below the edge of that table, right? So what happens when we're sewing, for a lot of us, if we're sewing at our dining room table or we're sewing with our machine up on top of a table, we're sewing at a height where we're having to raise our shoulders to get our hands up over our quilt in order to move it around, all right? And that's gonna lead to things like shoulder and neck pain, right? You bring those shoulders up, you're gonna start to cramp the ears, you're gonna start using all these tiny muscles back here to try to move things. Then you feel wonky, so you're gripping through your elbows, wrists, and the backs of your hands. If you have any kind of joint issues at all, they immediately flare up and quilting becomes painful. So what do we do instead, all right? The first thing is we want to make sure we're sitting up over our table. So if I raise my chair up here, all right, I'm going to want my table now to be between the bottom of my ribs and my belly button. All right, this is a little high. Let me get down just a little. That's pretty good. So let me tilt this down again. So see my table was here. See how that's several inches. So now notice when I relax my elbow and drop it down, I'm more or less right at the height of the table with my arms. Okay, so table height, we want to be level with the bottom of our rib cage so that we are up over our work. Okay, you're gonna feel like you're sitting a little high because we're used to being lower for things like eating and writing. All right, so you wanna sit up a little high. All right, and this is so that we can stack our body, right? We still want our feet to be close to flat on the floor. All right, at least very relaxed. We want our knees at approximately a right angle. We want our hips to form a right angle because we're sitting up over our pelvis, all right? If you've ever looked at the uh, human pelvis, there's little knobs at the bottom. This is where if your uh, kids, grandkids, friends, nieces, nephews, anybody runs and comes and jumps on your lap and you go, ah, you have a bony bum. Those are your ichial tuberosities, okay? They literally are bones at the bottom of your butt. Think of them like when you have a purse that has feet on the bottom. So you can set it on the floor and the bottom of your purse isn't actually touching the floor and it sits up, right? Those are that for our bodies, okay? So we want to be sitting up over our pelvis so our hips are at a nice right angle and then stack our shoulders over our hips and our head over our shoulders, all right? So our body is going to look nice and tall like this, okay? Not hunched like this or like this, right? Because if you're up way too high, you're going to be here scrunching down at your work. If you're, uh, if you're down low, you're going to be scrunched up trying to control your quilt. All right. We want everything to be relaxed and stacked and using nice right angles. This is going to improve our circulation 
So you're less likely to end up with any kind of numbness, right? This is also going to enable us to use larger muscle groups to control our quilt as we're moving it around, all right? Sitting up over our work like this, we can engage our core, which is not just your abdominal muscles on the front of your body, but also the side and back of your body. These are all our stabilizing muscles, right? We can use our stabilizing muscles. We can use our biceps and triceps to be moving our quilt around instead of the little muscles around our elbows and wrists, all right? Using larger muscles is going to decrease fatigue, lead to less soreness, less exhaustion, all right? Finally, the final kind of piece of the puzzle I want to add to this is do make sure you have really good light in your sewing room. I love the daylight LEDs, all right? This is the slim line. It's uh, connected over on the end of my desk over there. I can move it up and down. I can adjust the brightness. I love when I'm quilting, I bend it down like this. So it's shining right down under my work. So it's nice and bright and I can see what I'm doing, all right? As we age, I think it's past the age of 30, with every decade of age, we need an additional 10% of light to see without straining our eyes, okay? So that means that having those good focus lights on our work, our eyes aren't gonna be having to work as hard. We're less likely to strain forward with our neck in order to see what we're doing, okay? So here's a great visual. It's a little easier because I'm wearing winter clothes. So I'm on a big bulky coat today. You can see here on the left, this is sitting up over our work. Our body is upright. Uh, we're using our eyes to look, not straining our neck and everything's at nice gentle right angles. Versus on the right hand side, um, I see this so often, right? And this hurts. This is gonna hurt your body. It's gonna lead to a lot of soreness. This uh, posture on the right-hand side is also where our bodies tend to go as we become fatigued when we're quilting. So if you are starting to find it tiring to maintain that nice, clean posture on the left, and you're starting to creep towards having that more hunched posture on the right, it's time to take a break. It's time to eat a snack. It's time to drink some water. It's time to get up and move around, maybe stretch our shoulders, right? Quilting is more of a workout than we often talk about it being. So we want to have some really good best practices to take care of our bodies. All right. Remember, we want to always use the largest muscle group possible for all tasks. So if we can avoid gripping things with our hands, if we can use pressure down through the weight of our hand instead, we want to do that. We want to be sitting up over. So we're moving with our biceps, triceps, and delts rather than with the little muscles in our elbows and wrists. We want to be stabilizing with our core. That's what it's there for, okay? And like I said, stretch and hydrate frequently. Um, treat this as a bit of a workout. Take good care of your body while you're asking it to move a big, bulky quilt around on the table, all right? Any questions about posture? Yep, because this is my last slide. Look at that. I remembered. Sometimes I bumble through this, and I'm not sure where my last slide is. Any questions about posture, lighting, table setup? One of the most common questions I get um, is if you are petite, right? If you are less than the average height of a human, the challenge of getting up over your work while still being able to touch the floor. Um, and I truly recommend like get a box and put under your feet. Um, I want your feet to be resting, not, <clears throat> excuse me, not hanging. I want you to feel very comfortable, but getting up over your work is gonna be really important. Also consider affordable ways that you could do um, something custom for your sewing setup. So if you right now are sewing at the dining room table and those chairs tend to be really low and that table tends to be really high, um, keep your eyes out for like an old uh, sewing machine cabinet. I know that for a while I had one that um, belonged to a family member and you know it was from like the 50s, right? And my dad was able to kind of jerry-rig it so we could set my sewing machine in it, even though that wasn't the machine that had come with it. So I had a nice flush sewing surface. Uh, but with something like that, you could even then, if you needed to, you could trim the legs to actually lower the table if you're someone who wants to sit a little bit lower, right? Um, any way that you can figure out how to get that better ratio between how you're sitting and how your machine is positioned is going to make a really big difference. Um, what other questions have I heard? Yeah, that's a big one of like, if you're struggling with, you know, touching the floor. Um, also chairs. I have two main chairs that I use. So I'm sitting in one of them right now. 
Um, this is, y'all can't really see it. It's too low. This is the Aero Sewing Hydraulic Chair. I love it because it goes both really low and really high. Um, and it has really awesome lower back support. So it encourages you to sit up and sit forward. Um, and good cushion. It's comfy on your legs. All those good things. Um, the other chair that I use is right over here. Beth has seen this one. This is my saddle stool. Let's see if I can raise it up so y'all can see it. And it, it truly looks like a saddle. See? Truly looks like a saddle. And what this does is when you're sitting on it, because of that saddle shape, again, it's very hard to slouch back like this. It encourages you to sit up. This one does not have a back, so it really maximizes. <laughs> I raised that really high. Um, it really maximizes using your core for stability. Um, so I go back and forth because as I get tired, I want a backrest, right? All right. Beth says, if you have space in your house, you can try to find a cheap wood dining table and trim the legs. Yes. Yeah, so Beth, we were on the same wavelength of like, think of ways like, do you need to just trim the legs on a table, right? You can get something from uh, Goodwill or a thrift store. Or honestly, you might find something, you know, sitting out um, on trash or recycle day that you can refinish and really make a custom solution for a very affordable price point. Yeah. Great point. All right. Ask questions if you have them. I'm going to keep us moving and grooving because I could chatter about this all day. Let's talk about invisible starts and stops. All right. Now, as you may be noticing, our theme today, these are three must-have skills to successfully promotion quilt and finish our own quilts. These are also three things that are, I think, not talked about enough that are going to help set you up for success. So the right body positioning to have pain-free and less fatigue when we're quilting. Um, these invisible starts and stops so that we can have our beautiful motifs uh, without any kind of funky backstitching. Now, big giant asterisk. When you are quilting, if you prefer to just do a little backstitch or take a few stitches in place and then trim your threads flush, there are award-winning quilters, <clears throat> Angela Walters, who do this, okay? That is absolutely an option. I like to bury my threads because I think it is a little bit of a cleaner finish and I think it's a little less likely to unravel over time. And if you've been around here for more than five seconds, you know that my quilts get really heavy use, right? I showed you all the slide. I have a husband, I have two boys, we have two cats, we have a dog, right? My quilts get beat up. It is stressful to some of my friends how much my quilts get beat up. So I want to be able to have clean finishes and a durable finish, okay? So if you've seen quilts with what appear to be invisible starts and stops and the quilter has buried their threads, Burying your threads means to run the thread, so your top thread and your bobbin thread, take the tails from where you started and run them underneath the quilt top through the batting and then trim them at the other end. So what that means is there's a section of loose thread tail inside your quilt that's, that's hiding in there out of sight so that it's secure, okay? Now, here is the brief rundown of how to bury threads. And do I have a... I don't have a lasso over here. Interesting. All right. So start by pulling your th bobbin thread to the top of the quilt when you begin quilting. All right. You position your quilt to where you want to start. Hold your top thread. Lower your needle. Raise your needle. Okay. And then go. And your bobbin thread will pop through to the top of the quilt. So pull that out. So you've got a good four inches or so of both your top and bobbin thread. All right. Lower your needle again. Begin quilting. Quilt a whole section of your quilt, whether at the end of the quilt or at the end of that section, come back to this spot where these thread tails are, all right? For an extra secure finish, you're going to take those tails and you're going to knot them. Little basic granny knot, square knot, whatever kind of knot you want to do. Tie a really basic knot so the knot lands right up against the quilt top, all right? Then you're going to take a needle. This could be a self-threading needle. I've had very little success with self-threading needles, so I take a needle with a nice big eye like this. And I take a random bit of thread. Look, I'll just make a lasso. Right, I just, you know, grab a spare spool of thread, grab a spare bobbin, whatever. You just need, you know, six, eight inches of thread. You're gonna thread your needle one time. Okay. Needle threaded. Dun, da, da, da. Tie a knot. So that you've got two, three inches of thread.
coming off this needle, all right? So it looks like you're gonna sew with it, okay? How prevent thread being cut by a self-threading needle? I don't use self-threading needles for this, Tanya, so if you're having issues with them, I'd recommend using this method instead. All right, so see how I now have a little loop of thread coming off my needle, okay? Yeah, and, and Joe, if self-threading needles work great for you, you know, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I just find that this works smoother for me. All right, so I have this little lasso. So I'm gonna, then I'll reach through my little lasso and I'll pull my thread tails through. So instead of threading a needle with my thread tails, I just thread them through this little lasso. Um, think of this like if you have ever had to use like one of those floss threaders to get around braces or under bridge work, same concept, all right? We're using this nice large eye to get things through, all right? Then you're gonna put the tip of your needle into the top of your quilt right where those threads were coming out. And you're gonna run the needle under the quilt top, not all the way through the quilt, just under the quilt top. And you'll rock your needle and pull it up about a needle's length away. <whistles> pull everything through. And then you'll trim those threads right where they've popped out so they're nice and flush with the quilt top. So you now have your little knot has been popped down into your batting and your thread tail and everything is nice and hidden and invisible. And you have buried your threads. Congratulations. All right, so what is hard to see, at least on my screen, I think if you're watching me on a larger screen, you'll see this a little bit easier. Um, there is a metric you know what ton of quilting on this quilt, and it had so many starts and stops. Like just about every little section had a start and a stop, all right? But all of that becomes invisible once you bury the threads, all right? Any questions about burying your threads? Like I said, you can use a self-threading needle, you can just use a needle with a big eye, or you can use that lasso method that I talked to you about today. What I like about the lasso method um, is that it's fast, right? I pop the threads through, I run them through, I trim. I pop the threads through, I run them through, I trim. Uh, and especially on a quilt like this where I have a lot of threads, <clears throat> not having to have such a fine motor skill to get something threaded in order to do that makes my life a lot easier. Especially if I'm quilting with tired eyes at the end of a long day. All right. All right. If you have questions, keep them coming. But let's talk about the final piece of this puzzle. And this is a really important one. Like I said, everything we're talking about today are things that I feel like don't get enough conversation. Uh, and that's why I like having the conversations around them. Right. So let's talk about your IMG, your inner mean grump and free motion quilting. All right. Think of your inner mean grump. This is your inner critic. This is that mean voice that lives in your head. Uh, this is your voice of self-doubt, right? Whatever you want to call that, around here, we call it your inner mean grump or your IMG, all right? Now, the inner mean grump is a very deep part of your brain. It's a very important part of your brain. This is rooted in the part of your brain that keeps you safe from danger. So this is the part of uh, the brain that would have told, you know, early humans in history, that's a cheetah, don't let it get you right? Or like, no, don't get too close to the bison. It's going to kill you. Or it says fire is hot. Don't touch it, right? This part of the brain is very rooted in keeping us alive and then being very sensitive to danger. It's a very fearful part of our brain. It's important, right? Like this is how we don't step out into traffic. This is how we don't burn ourselves on the stove, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The downside is that this part of our brain is so suspicious that it often cannot tell the difference between an actual threat, cheetah, fire, traffic, and a perceived threat, learning to do something new, all right? All things that are unfamiliar are labeled as dangerous to your inner mean grump. And that means if you're brand new to free motion quilting or you've tried free motion quilting before with limited success, there's a high likelihood that your brain is gonna send out a big red danger signal, okay? So how do we calm our inner mean grump and tell it, I'm going to learn how to do this and it's going to be fine, even though you're scared right now, right? Uh, the first way that we can do this, and depending on your personality, this might be your favorite way. This tends to be one of my favorite ways, information and logic, all right? So today we discuss some really practical solutions for some of the challenges that arrive when you're learning how to free motion quilt, right? You start learning how to quilt for the first time. You start to experience shoulder and neck pain. You now have information about how to adjust your posture 
and your quilting situation in order to overcome that challenge, right? And you can tell yourself, oh, I, I know the solution to this. I can solve this, right? So information is a great way. A problem has presented itself. I'm going to go find a solution. Then my brain can calm down, all right? Sometimes you need a personal pep talk, right? Sometimes you have all the information and you're practicing the things, but you're kind of in the thick of it, right? Things haven't quite come together yet. You're learning your first few motifs. Your stitch length is all over the place. You're you know, learning how to get your tension set up has made you swear, and you're really unsure if you know how to do this, all right? Giving yourself a pep talk, reminding yourself things like, you know, once upon a time, I didn't know how to walk, and I fell on my butt a lot, but then I learned how to walk. Uh, once upon a time, I didn't know how to write. I scribbled a lot, and now I know how to write, right? Sometimes we can give ourselves a pep talk and say, I've learned other skills before. I'm going to learn this too. I can do hard things. It's okay that I didn't get it done the first time. Now, if you've tried both of those, there's also a third way, and that is to come to your fellow rock stars, right? As kids, our imaginations love to run away with us, and we would just believe that the world was our oyster. But as adults, it's often our negative self-talk that steals the show, right? This is why we teach the classes that we teach in community, because sometimes you need someone else to come alongside you and say, hey, 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 hey. You're saying a lot of really mean things about this meander that you quilted, but I think it looks awesome. I think you're doing a great job, and I think you should keep practicing, right? So having friends, having community, having access to your teacher are all ways that you can then say, hey, y'all, I'm struggling. My brain has run away with this. Can I get some feedback? You know, and sometimes that feedback, like I said, might be, I think it looks great. I don't know why your brain's being mean to you. And sometimes that feedback may be, yeah, I see what you mean about your stitch length being all over the place. Have you tried this other solution in order to work on it, right? Remember, no matter what your IMG says, you can and will be a free motion quilting rock star, all right? I want to drive this point home because it is so common when I am talking to incredible quilters, quilters that have been quilting longer than I've been alive. And we start talking about free motion quilting and, and I see the panic in their eyes, right? Of, I can't do that. I'm not creative enough. I'm not coordinated enough. I don't have the skills. And I'm like, yeah, you do, right? And I want to just have that conversation straight up of like, let me show you. Let me show you the way. Let me show you the incredible things that you're capable of because I believe in you, all right? Now, if you have any questions, I want you to ask those in the chat. I also want you to go back to that free motion quilting dream that we talked about about 30 minutes ago, right? At the beginning of our time together, you told me about a plan, a motif, a quilt, uh, that you're really excited to quilt yourself. I hope that after our chat today and talking a little bit about how to set up your sewing room and how to bury those threads and how to overcome that voice of self-doubt, you're feeling even more excited to go tackle this goal. I hope you have a little bit of that like chomping at the bit feeling, right? Because I want to remind you that that dream is absolutely possible. And that dream is going to be possible because of the steps you're going to take next. Now, there are two options. Uh, you can putter around on the internet looking at videos of free motion quilting. Uh, there are some really great ones. There are some not so great ones out there, right? Uh, but I think the much more fun thing, rather than having to sit at home behind your computer, bumbling around by yourself, um, is I would love to invite you to take a proven path with me, to join a couple of thousand free motion quilting rock stars that are already part of the academy and part of our community um, and make a big leap towards making that free motion quilting dream come true inside of free motion quilting academy. I don't remember if this is our 13th or 14th cohort. I've lost track at this point because we've had the incredible delight of teaching so many students. But every single time, I just get absolutely fired up to watch your dreams come true. Free Motion Quilting Academy, as I mentioned, is a proven method. Inside the academy, we build on the lessons from today's masterclass in 12 weeks of step-by-step -step video lessons designed to help you grow from a nervous beginner free motion quilter to a confident intermediate free motion quilting rock star. All right, let me introduce you to Maureen. Maureen said, I loved everything about Free Motion Quilting Academy. At 69, I was a little doubtful that I could learn how to free motion quilt, but when I found Hollyann's intro to FMQ, I decided I had to try. Hollyann's teaching style and videos are fantastic, and although the course is 12 weeks long, there's no pressure to finish within that time period. More on that in a second. Life sometimes gives us, uh, life sometimes gets in the way, 
And it's so very nice to have one less pressure. I love being able to go back to the course over and over again for a refresher of any of the motifs. Another wonderful part of this course is being able to post questions and being uh, and be in contact with others taking the course. There's so much encouragement within the group. Holly, and thank you for this fantastic course. I hope one day I pop into your shop. Maureen, I'm still hoping for this. I love it uh, to meet you in person. This will go down as one of the very best Christmas gifts my six children have given me. So let's talk about what's included in Free Motion Quilting Academy. All right. And let me grab my link for y'all because you're going to need it in like five seconds. Oh, why don't I have any links handy? All right. So Free Motion Quilting Academy, as mentioned, is a 12-week course. This is a professionally filmed course, um, including six pre-recorded video units teaching you all the ins and outs of free motion quilting from setup to how to stitch over two dozen motifs. All right? Absolutely incredible value. These are all the motifs, in case you're wondering. This lovely quilt that you've been seeing behind me for the last bit are all 30 motifs that we tackle together. All right? We also have a bonus unit all about how to make quilting plans, how to decide what motifs go where. We also have lots more resources about that on the blog. So we work through those together as we're going through the course. There's a massive 50 plus page course workbook, access to our exclusive online community with live video Q and A. So they're every other week during the 12 weeks of the course. Um, they're a little more often than that. I think there's seven or eight this cohort if I remember the schedule correctly, um, as well as ongoing support from me and your fellow rock stars as we continue. Like I mentioned, there's a couple of thousand rock stars in this class now, so you have so much support. If I'm not online, somebody is online, all right? And you have lifetime access to all of the above. So that means that once you're in, you're in, which Melinda, I think this is uh, exactly the question you're asking. Melinda says, I signed up for Free Motion Quilting Academy in September, 2022 but had some significant life challenges at the time and never started. Is it too late to do the course now? Nope. Log on in, Rockstar. Go log into Kajabi. Your course is waiting for you. The community is waiting for you. And this is a perfect time to kick off. All right? So that Melinda is an amazing example. Once you're in, you're in, right? So you purchase the course. Any updates we make over any period of time, you get all those updates for free. Every time there's a new cohort, you have the opportunity to turn it, uh, tune into those Q&A sessions. It's an amazing time together, all right? And an amazing opportunity that if you're someone who needs a schedule and you want to go through in 12 weeks, you absolutely can. If you're someone that you're like, I want to start learning this, but I know I'm going to have to pick it up and put it down because life is kind of crazy, this is, works for you as well, all right? So Free Motion Quilting Academy is open now through December 31st. Uh, this weekend is early bird enrollment, which means you get the special deal of our early bird tuition rate, which is 297 U.S., or three payments of $99. Orientation starts on January 2nd. Um, what's really great about that in my mind, one, if this is something that is on your bucket list, on your New Year's resolution list for 2024, you hit the ground running on that resolution. I love starting the new year with a win, all right? The other really cool thing about that is at least for me, January and February are when my seasonal depression it's not good, right? Like it's gray, the holidays are over, it's still cold outside. And now instead of feeling the doldrums of January and February, you can be hanging out with me and your fellow quilting rock stars, mastering an amazing skill. All right. I've dropped the link in the chat. Let's keep talking together about what's included in the class. All right. We start off with an introduction and orientation that is going to be available for you right away. All right. So when you purchase the class and you log in, we have all that information ready and waiting. The only thing not waiting for you that's in that unit is going to be your workbook. All right. The workbook will come out at the beginning of January. From there, we will move quickly into foundational skills and first motifs and your beginner motif toolbox in units one and two. Those first 10 motifs are kind of the drinking out of a fire hose moment, right? We jump straight in. We get you quilting, get you learning all the different um motifs and shapes and then we build on those in the rest of our unit so unit three finishing the toolbox slash continuous curves unit four fancy fillers unit five graffiti quilting and more and then unit six feathers plus as i mentioned we have that bonus unit about how to make a quilting plan all right for those who may be wondering this does not include ruler work our class ruler quilting academy is the one that you're gonna be looking for if you're wanting to learn how to quilt with rulers. Um, and this class is absolutely applicable to a long arm or mid arm machine. 
It is filmed on a domestic sit down machine. All right. It's filmed on my Juki J150 that I had a couple of years ago. Um, it has a nice big throat, which makes it easier for filming. I have also taught this class on a Singer Quantum Stylus 9960, which has a five and a half inch throat. So whatever size machine you have, this class is for you. All right. Tanya, I'm sorry this isn't the right fit right now. We try to make it as accessible as possible with our payment plans, but we will have future enrollments. So if FMQA is something that's interested, uh, interesting for you, I hope you'll be able to save up and join us in the future because that would be really awesome. All right, how does the online community work? The units and our community are hosted on a platform called Kajabi, okay? Inside our Kajabi um, library, you're going to have your units. Think of that like our classroom. That's where you're going to log in over and over again to be able to access those videos. All right. On the community side of Kajabi, think of that like study hall. Um, that's where you're going to be able to chit chat, just like kind of like a Facebook group. Like you're going to be able to chit chat with your fellow rock stars, share pictures, ask questions. And that's where we'll post the links to where I'll be doing live Q&As throughout the course. All right. Our live Q&As are on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, but I know that that time is not ideal for everybody. Um, so there's always a replay and there's always the opportunity to submit your questions ahead of time. So if you're like, oh, shoot, I'm going to be at work Tuesday night, you can log in, ask your questions and our questions post, and then I'll answer them the next day. And that replay will be waiting for you. All right. So what does lifetime access mean? It means exactly what I was explaining to Melinda, that once you're in, you're in. All right. I love having a 12 week schedule for those of you who really need a plan and you want to stick to the plan. I also know that life can happen, right? In 2020, during the fall cohort alone, my grandfather passed away. I had an emergency appendectomy and I broke my ankle, right? A lot of life happened. Now, we have all of the lessons pre recorded. So when stuff happens in my life, your student experience isn't interrupted, right? But I know that sometimes your life can look like that as well, that it can just feel like it's one thing after another and you're trying to get back to your free motion quilting and it's just not working out the way you want. The whole point of lifetime access is that you can step into the class and be working on it, step out and deal with life and come back as often or as much as you want without paying extra. All right. Once you're in, you're in. We do refer to the group that signs up together as a cohort. So just know, like, if you were to sign up now, you will always be the winter 2023 cohort. Uh, but that's, you know, just based on when you enrolled, you can stay in the class for as long as you like. All right. So let me introduce you to Gail. Uh, this lovely picture of her final project was taken outside String and Story on Maine. Um, and Gail says, I'm so happy to graduate. I've taken almost a year to finish. Most rock stars do. And that's okay. I was in the fall 2022 cohort. And the lifetime access was one of the big benefits to me. As I knew I wouldn't have time in my schedule to finish in 12 weeks. The videos are wonderful since I can go back to them anytime and we'll see the latest version of the videos with any updates. I realized after I had the sampler on my long arm that I never watched the feathers videos. So I stepped back, watched from, uh, watched them practice on my whiteboard and jumped in. Now I love doing feathers. Hollyans, you can do this encouragement and cheerleading helped me figure out what to do for a whole cloth as well to get my sampler put together and on the long arm and finished. And I just want you to know so one of the things for our Free Motion Quilting Academy, so we have two final projects. One is the sampler. The other is the whole cloth that Gail is holding. Now, Gail put a border around hers, but that teal section in the middle is all one piece of fabric. All the colors you see in the rainbow, the rocks, the tree, the water, that's all thread. Gail Free Motion quilted all of that, and it looks incredible. All right. So Free Motion Quilting Academy allows you to learn free motion quilting from the privacy and comfort of your own home. It encourages you to start with what you have, keeping supplies minimal and affordable rather than urging you to buy a fancier machine. Big asterisk, we are a Burnett dealer. If you are needing a permission slip to buy a bigger, fancier machine, I am happy to help you with that. If you're on a machine that you feel like as you get going uh, is really not meeting your needs, I am happy to help you with that. But I do want to drive home the point that I'm a big believer in starting with what you have. I've had folks graduate from Free Motion Quilting Academy on treadle machines, all right? And on the biggest, most expensive long arm on the market and everything in between, all right? Free Motion Quilting Academy is ready when you are, regardless of geography or time zone with on-demand pre-recorded video lessons. And it offers you ongoing access to the instructor, hello, so you never feel alone or stuck and get near real-time help during live stream Q&A sessions. 
Promotion Quilting Academy also connects you with other rock stars in training around the world so you can help and encourage each other. Just like y'all have gotten a taste of that in our chat today, I love y'all being able to connect with one another and build relationships as you're building your skills. All right. Sandra says, I love tax enthusiastic support and teaching style. The supportive environment is cultivated and per the permission is to not be perfect. I love it. Practice, is, uh, practice makes progress. Done is better than perfect. And joy units are our highest priority. All right. Pat says, I really liked the carefully structured lessons in Kajabi, which allowed me to progress at my own pace and to review lessons when needed. Holly Ann does a great job of, in her descriptions and demos, and I really appreciated the focus on progress rather than perfection. My inner mean grump needed to be put in its place while working through some of the blocks since I'm a relative newcomer to long arming as well as free motion quilting. The quilting journey continues. And Joanna says, I love the self-directed nature of these videos and how Holly Ann shows what she's doing up close on an actual quilt. I also love how she lets mistakes be what they are. She didn't try to prevent an illusion of perfection, which gave my uh, allowed me to give myself some grace when I made mistakes. So rock stars, I would love to invite you to close out 2023 by betting on yourself for 2024, betting on your goals and dreams to get those free motion quilting uh, goals accomplished to make that dream come true. And I would love to be a part of it inside of Free Motion Quilting Academy. So as I mentioned, I've got the link right down here. Let me get it back in the chat for you. Do, 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 do. Um, if you've already jumped in, do say so in the chat. I'd love to know if any of y'all have already joined us. Um, and thank you so much again for your time today. If you have any questions about the class, please drop them down in the chat. I've got a minute to say and answer those. Uh, Beth says, when does week one begin? So our new student orientation will start January 2nd. So that's going to be when we're going over logging in. We'll go over all the supplies that you need. Your workbook will release. Um, and then unit one will release at the end of that. And then our, I think unit two comes out kind of right on the heels. We do one and two really close together because I know when we start something new, right, our motivation is high. And I want you all to be able to jump in and make a lot of progress while that motivation is high. Now, that being said, I know that the very beginning of the year can be a little crazy. Okay. So if you're like, e, it's going to be like mid January before I'm really able to get into this. Is that going to be a problem? It's not going to be a problem. Okay. Um, January 2nd is not live. So let me look at, hang on the calendar. January 2nd is a Tuesday. Our first live will be on Wednesday. We'll have a Q and a on Wednesday, the third, uh, the other parts of orientation are delivered via email. Yep. And same thing for that Q&A, we will announce ahead of time that it's coming. And if you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to be there on the third, uh, you can ask those questions ahead of time. Um, we have a Q&A on, I believe we have one the third. I think we have another one on the 10th as well. So we have kind of back-to-back Q&As right at the beginning to make sure y'all get set up for success. Absolutely. Yep. Um, let's see. Beth says, even though it's a 12 week program, we'd really be working on our own schedule and only the live sessions are spread out through the 12 weeks. Yes. So over the 12 weeks, we'll have a schedule that's actually already waiting for y'all inside Kajabi. Um, once you get enrolled and so the lessons drip out over 12 weeks and I think it's at the end of so the end of week 12 or week 13, we have graduation. I think those are my children on the playground. <laughs> John must be out there somewhere. Um, yeah, so the week of end of 12, the 12th or 13th week is when we have our graduation. So if you're still working through at your own pace at the end of that 12 weeks, you would just carry on. And then the next time the course comes around, we have another graduation. We have more live Q and A's. So there tend to be kind of gaps in between a little bit where the group will quiet down a little, but you just keep chugging along and things will pick right back up with the next cohort. Yep. D says, I downloaded the workbook. I missed filling in the blanks for part two, invisible starts and stops, um, and part three. D, I'm so sorry. I don't have the workbook in front of me at the moment. Yep, I not even right here in the store. Wow, that drawer is really messy. So unfortunately, I do not have those blanks top of mind at the moment, D. I did not grab it this morning. My apologies. You will be able, however, to catch the replay and rewind and take another look at those uh, slides in just a minute. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Terry says, do you do classes in the Duluth store? We do not usually do free motion quilting classes, incidentally, um, because we have free motion quilting academy. So we have sip and sews and we have other sewing and garment classes at the Duluth store. Uh, we actually are due to publish our spring schedule here very soon. 
but we don't have any free motion quilting on the schedule here. We do all of those online. Yeah. It's so much easier for you ultimately to be on your own machine and to be at home. Yeah. Cynthia says, what time are the Q&A sessions? They're usually, at, I think, mm, hold on. Well, let me see what we did for our QA. Because we have our QA, QA. Yes, our QAs are at 10 a.m. Uh, FM QAs are at 11 a.m. Eastern. Yep. And like I said, there's always the opportunity to ask questions ahead of time. And then that replay is available right afterward. Yeah. I hope that I see each and every one of you inside of Free Motion Quilting Academy. Again, thank you so much for taking time out of a busy holiday weekend to be here. It was an absolute delight to share some tips and tricks with you. Uh, I hope you already have something to take back to your sewing room uh, to enjoy as part of your quilting practice. Have a fabulous rest of your Saturday, Rockstars. I'll see you in FMQA.